Hi, everyone. It's Georgie and Claire, the Venus Twins. Welcome yeah. to another interview. Today's chat, we, it's probably not really an interview, is it that formal, is with a wonderful, we feel part of our soul family, don't we? My, sure. Michael Muir from the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, oh. Australia. So he's a fellow Australian has joined us today and we're very grateful to have his time and energy with us today and to meet him and get to know him. We're so excited about this. Um, Michael is a transformational healer. He's a teacher, a somatic psychotherapist, astral shaman, uh, light language channel for the Galactic Federation of Light and also the Pleiadian Collective. Is that right, Michael? Um, I hope I've got all that right. Anyway, he's an amazing man who is doing so much wonderful work for humanity and has a fabulous following of people, including Claire and I. We've been following him for quite some time and then just thought we're going to reach out to him. We'd love to meet him in person one day, but on Zoom for now. So welcome, Michael. Welcome, and thank Michael. you so much for joining From us. From the Soul Magic Collective. That's the name of your group, isn't it? Your... Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Go Anna. ahead. Tell I've just been very, very excited to be here and, and really honoured that you reached out to me and just really oh. sort of open to what unfolds here in this kind of co-creation that we've got. So, so we, there's, there's a lot of a lot of 11s going on, aren't there, to do with mm -hmm. our co-creation too. Start with so you at 11-11. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of freaky 11s going on. And yesterday was quite strange. I just opened Facebook thinking... I'm really tired. I think I might do one of uh, Michael's light language activations. I'll just have a look. I open, mm. literally open Facebook and you popped up doing a live. <laughs> I mm. joined and I was the 11th person to come on mm. and someone made a comment, oh, there's 11 of us. And you were talking about the 1111 portal coming up <laughs> and the importance of it. And it's, so, it's on. It feels very on. And the, and the, um, and really, I, I picked a few cards this morning just to sort of check in around because we talked about dragons as well last night on Messenger, and um, the black dragons uh, came in for the uh, came in yesterday for the um, eleven eleven portal uh, that's coming up. But also, it feels like they're very present with us today, supporting, holding this space, and to really bring whatever energy uh, is needed for the collective right now. I feel. Yes, and I haven't told you, but I'm very connected to dragons too. I'm sure Claire is as well, but for me, it's opened up enormously. I've got 12 of my own that I've met so far, all oh. different ones, and I've been doing some, mm -hmm. some work with dragons that I can't talk about, but it's very exciting. And the most recent work I've been doing has been with black dragons. So it's really oh, interesting that they came up. And oh. you know what else? The... the, the the work that I'm doing now, so that's work I've just done, was with Black Dragons. The work I'm doing now is more to do with what you're talking about next, like pink. Ah, cool, cool, cool. Okay, sweet, sweet, yeah. sweet, sweet. <laughs> I don't know how much to say, actually, so I'll just keep my mouth shut now, but I love dragons. <laughs> love all things dragon. Yeah. And okay. Just a little bitty one. Love all your crystals, obsessed <laughs> with crystals too, so shazam <laughs> and yeah. oh wow my goodness yeah you can you can go nuts talking to me about all that stuff and i'll just sit and listen and join so, in. Where, do you, you where, do you, where do you would you like me to start i guess or what do you want to, is there anything you want me to i'd love to know a bit about your background how did you um awaken yeah. to your true spiritual nature you know how did your journey begin for you in doing so I wasn't really uh, uh, really looking to get into this kind of work, channeling and light language and all that sort of, I guess, woo-woo stuff you would call it these days. Um, I, I started my background actually in um, science. So I studied in the UK and um, came over to Australia um, around to around um, 95 um, and was working in science for about 10 years here. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I, start, I, I did some personal development uh, workshops that included the bodily experience. Um, so they were sort of, um, they were working with the psychology of the person, but also working with the body hands-on so, uh, and, and doing ex ex somatic exercises to open up the body. And, um, and it was that that really led me into thinking, I need to do this more. I need to work with the body because I was very disconnected physically, not very really embodied, uh, much more um, mind. And um, so I thought I'm going to grab myself a somatic therapist and work with the body and the mind. And I did a long-term therapy. And that's what really set me off 
on my journey, I guess, uh, because it, I, it was so good. I really wanted to train in that. So I trained as a therapist in that and worked with clients and still have that sort of traditional uh, therapeutic clientele. But also it opened up um, when we were doing the hands-on training of the bodywork module of the, uh, of the somatic psychotherapy, um, the light language came through. So if people don't know what light language is, it's kind of, I would say that it, it sounds like uh, uh, some would say talking in tongues if you're into the Pentecostal church, but it's non-religious. It sounds a little strange like gobbledygook, but it flows out as though it's another language like French, or Italian or whatever. And it comes naturally. And it's really about um, bringing through frequency from a different place often galactic, scented master, dragon-like, whatever the channel sort of connects with personally. And so when I was doing this um, training, this sound came out and I'd never really um, heard of it. It was about 2004-ish. Uh, so it was when Facebook hadn't really kicked off that much. Uh, so there was no groups and sort of tribe and people oh. to check in. If there was no, there's no one talking about light language back then so i was like whoa um, what is this i'm already straight I think that's a, bra <laughs> a brave thing to be yeah, on then. i was like oh my goodness and i was sort of so i checked in with some and i was doing some uh tibetan buddhist um training at the same time as well and that was sort of very i don't know if you guys know about tibetan buddhism but um not much. A little bit. Mm. Yeah. So basically, I felt like it opened me up to channeling, to be honest, because when you're sitting doing the the practices and repeating the mantras and uh, really embodying the deity, because you're embodying the deity energetically through the through through the sadhana practice, I feel that allows you to actually really you're channeling a different energy. You're channeling a oh. being. You know what I mean. So I feel like that opened up that doorway to mm. channel in some ways and that also probably opened up the light language but in that context nobody really knew what it was and and so they kind of poo-pooed it a little and but that was also quite a useful thing for me at the time because I wasn't as grounded hadn't done enough uh core work to really stabilize in my body yeah. so I really left it alone for about 10 years oh. and that was really healthy for me I had to do some more um personal work to get more uh anchored and more sane <laughs> and then and then <laughs> I, know, I get it <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then eventually around to the 2012 you know when all that kicked off um I moved into doing a retreat with a light language channel which I said I'm sure you know Judy Satori she's been um She's been, I, I feel like she's been around the longest uh, she was doing light language before anybody else. And, uh, and she's been, and so I went to a retreat with her and more than anything, it gave me permission and it gave me a tribe um, mm -hmm. to sort of work with in, because the retreat was held in Sydney. I used to be in Sydney. I've just, yes. I moved to Sunshine about three years ago. Um, so it gave me a really a blast of the energy, a, a, a sort of a tribe to work with, both one-on-ones uh, -on -ones really. And that allowed me to um, just gather information. As a scientist that I am, I really needed to prove that this was actually useful to, to, he to heal people or to work with people because I mean, oh, what's the point? You know what I mean? So it was working and I was already running groups more somatic bodywork based. So I just started introducing a little bit into the bodywork groups. And so, and from there, it kind of just built where I sort of pulled back on doing the somatic work so much and started really moving much more into my channel. Um, and um, yeah, so that's, I guess, the background. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. And, and how did you come to meet the beings that you're channeling to? Uh, so, um, so I guess they came, the, the, the beings that I channel have, uh, changed and, um, yeah, so vast. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? They change over time. It feels like as the energy shift in, in the collective and the what's going on. Uh, so I never really used to connect with dragons at all, but they're really there with me right now. I was very, um, 
connected. I did very connect. I connect very strongly with the Palladians at the beginning, which is when I I need to update my website. But um, <laughs> so the 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 um the Palladian aspect was very strong at the beginning. I I went to Uluru. Um, I was guided to go to Uluru. I met uh to a uh you know Chiron uh Cryon, the American yeah. channel. Yeah, oh, I you went, met you met him. Yeah, I went. Cool. To, yeah, I went to a a conference there, and he were he got it got that was the carrot to get me there, and then I sort of really opened through the energies of all the room, the Palladian frequencies there, and so that was really big time for quite some time, and at the same time Thoth came in around that time too, so I was working with Thoth and um, the Palladian energies for quite a while, but they kind of, for me they kind of come and go, and it sort of feels it it feels like um it also feels dependent on where the collective is and the time of year so when it's the 8-8 portal for example mm -hmm. when it's very kind of egyptian feel i connect more with the egyptian kind of ascended masters or thoth or um syrian codes so and then a different and um and lyran yeah and lyran yeah so it really just depends on what's i guess what's um happening yeah, in, wow. in the etheric field but it started small with one or two and then it expanded as I've got stronger and, and more practiced yeah 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 that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah same similar with us to connect to different councils depending in, in session mm -hmm. mainly um, oh, cool. people, yeah the Arcturians and the Arcturian council and, yeah. And it and, yeah, and I dragons, like, council dragons for George. And I don't know about if you feel this too, but um I often feel that also when I'm working with a, a person in a session or a group, I work with either the, the higher self of the group or the higher or with the person. And if they've got certain connections, um ascended Mary Magdalene, you know, uh the dragons, um Acturians then I sometimes can work with that energy just with that individual, but it's not something that I would channel ordinarily. So I just really feel like my conduits use to support their yeah, right. in codes through for them or bringing the information through for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And did it did it take a while for you to stop the thinking mind being in control too much and to transition to that state of absolute trust and flow and letting go? Because I can really relate to that. You know, Emory, as mentioned before, as in being, you know, right into science and, um, yeah. you know, learning so much academically first the way you did and and the path you were following and then all of a sudden it was all about, oh, hang on, I've got to <laughs> let go of this thinking mind now and not analyse things and just let go and trust this channeling that's coming through and and all this crazy <laughs> stuff in a time where it wasn't really yeah, you know, for sure. like it is now. It's a real yeah, challenge. No, I, I really can relate because I think that uh, when anyone's doing something that's a little uh, outside of mainstream, <laughs> there's a risk of ridicule and um, all sorts of things. You know what I mean? And oh, um, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Do mean? So it does. We're off with the fairy. <laughs> <laughs> it really puts you. You know, it really puts you out there and I think you have and most I think starseeds light workers uh earth worker types have had either trauma growing up or um past life trauma uh which where we have been cut down for who we are and what we stand for so I think that's I feel like that's the biggest hurdle and that's a lot of the energies that I clear with people is to release them from um the fears that are very uh, in, in the light body um, uh, that are not really in the conscious mind. You know, we don't know why we feel the way we do. You know, there could be a, for example, <laughs> there could be a lot of anxiety coming up in somebody and that could be because really they're about to step up into something massive and there it is a, a pre kind of uh, body response. Mm -hmm. And November, like November feels like it's going to be a very powerful month too. Very much. Yeah. I kind of it, when I was doing that little channeling yesterday for um for just for the Facebook Live, uh, uh you know it feels like the eleven eleven this year. I don't know if something's going to go down globally, mm -hmm. or it's just a massive influx of light. 
but it definitely feels um pretty major you know pretty even major. as yeah. someone pointed out in the chat as well 11 11 2023 adds up to 11 so this is a real oh. potent 11 11 i feel uh, okay okay I really what? feel like the timelines are already, people are choosing which one they want to be on. I really feel that has happened in the last few days and kind mm. of is almost like done. Mm. I don't know. That's just what I what I was getting, mm. um, which is a good thing. Um, yeah, listen to a beautiful transmission from um, Matt the, the Kahn. beautiful Matt Kahn. I, I think you may follow him too, Michael. Yeah, I love yeah, his stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's been so amazing and uh it really it brought me to tears actually towards the end of it with the the uh repeat after me that he does um but yeah he was um putting so many things into perspective and I'd love to get your take on on what you feel is going on right now uh you know for for us for us all humans <laughs> uh I can give you me can a put that in a few sentences. <laughs> we're, <try>. we're certainly <laughs> feeling it. We're feeling the intense. So I guess I, I guess my I guess um how to I frame uh, I always because I'm very intensely emotional. <laughs> yeah. Um I, I frame my uh experience through the emotional uh, body I guess for uh, and to support people in that way. So uh for me um what I'm noticing with people is, it, yeah, I feel like there's that real set. There's a, been a real karmic split lately. So, um, like a lot of long-term relationships have completed. Um, yes. People are choosing different friends, choosing different jobs. So it does feel like, and I think since pre before the eclipse season, um, a lot of deep dive, a lot of deep dive into the emotional body, into the heart space and 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 clearing energies and and sometimes physically as well that has allowed a deeper awareness of knowing to come through in people uh, of their truth and who they are and i think then that ripples out because everyone says oh the eclipse cold and it's so big but i think it's the aftermath that's bigger i think it's what happens as a result of working with those energies and so i just think uh, the rest of this year is huge that's what it feels like, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> no. Hold on, strap into that roller coaster. Yeah. So how do yeah how do we um sort of yeah what what what's a good you know thing for us to do to sort of keep sane and yeah. uh, you know what's, what would you? I, mean, I just always come back to feeling safe in your body, you know, yeah, because like that's that's because I'm a somatic person, and because I do get um, fear anxiety uh and that's if i get it you know i remember one of my somatic teachers saying to uh, uh notice without deciding because when we feel a lot um we can translate it as something that's scary or um something's wrong uh and then we sort of can make a narrative about it and i do that a lot and um so i think just jumping out of <laughs> so i think just jumping out of like getting body work getting massage uh connected nurturing connect uh friends tribe obviously um i nature, think we, nature yeah, nature like <laughs> the ocean. i really do feel like it's a matter of um self-regulation of the nervous system because the energies that are coming in are so heightened and then there's no let up and then they're more heightened that to a sensitive nervous system and most channels are uh, have a sensitive nervous system um it's a lot it's a lot to to be bringing through i mean i have, i said to somebody the other day um who wasn't who doesn't really know understand what i do i said it's a lot it, like when i'm channeling for two hours with a group it's like um high voltage electricity going through my body mm -hmm. you know what I mean? it's sort of um, it's very fast. It's very electric. Um, I don't. I, I if I look back and and review what I've done, it's very different from the inward experience. And it do, like people say, oh my goodness, you just do a little bit here, do a little bit there. But you know, it takes a lot to, of time for a channel. It's all the prep before the event. Oh, right? absolutely. Can we relate right to that? Mm -hmm. The holding of the space, the holding of the space, and and then, um, and then. Uh, uh, clearing your own clearing so you're ready for the group and to hold the group um but so but back to the question i guess just really care for your body um uh acupuncture is really good uh I'm getting uh, some of that today 
Oh, good on you. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah acupuncture, um, biodynamic massage is also very good. I think there's some somatic people in Melbourne as well. Um, I'm going to write that down. Mm, bio, yeah, what is it called? Biodynamic. Biodynamic. Was it dynamic? That yeah. sounds better than the... Yeah, it's kind of like... It's, it. <laughs> it's kind of like a uh, therapeutic massage. So it kind of works on your energy but your and your nervous system to process to sort of like sometimes when we get stressed we can hold or we can have unresolved trauma and it helps things to flow yeah sounds like a more intuitive massage very much so yeah, where the therapist needs to tap into where you need to shift yeah that. yeah yeah totally totally they're hard uh, to find yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah and it, it but they you do a two-year training it's part of the somatic training so they're pretty good at what uh, uh, really getting to the and they work with each person individually so it's a it's a good practice it's a good practice yeah, yeah. great good so how, how do people um find you michael like and 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 get, tell us a bit about your um soul magic collective and if you so, um if people like i'm i'm still i still use facebook quite a bit and yep. I so if they want to just add me as a friend on Michael Muir on Facebook, um, I, I do a lot of stuff there. But yeah, can, it's great, yeah. <laughs> very very present on there. It's cool. Yeah, I'm about the I, only I, person I enjoy looking at on there these days. Everyone, else you. <laughs> you know, I don't mean that in a nasty way to my mates, but it's just, <laughs> just a bit. But. A lot of people have moved off it though as well, and and yeah. I understand. I keep uh, certain narratives away from from that, of course, but. Um, but yeah, uh, I do find that that works for me and I have fun with it. So I still use it. Um, but uh, uh, you're on Telegram too, aren't you? You're yeah, on I'm quite on a Telegram. few platforms. Yeah, yeah if they, if, I think if I think it's Linktree. If they yeah. if, if they check my Linktree. Um, links Michael, will be down below, everyone. Yeah, for, we'll, for we'll Michael put Michael's. today. Um, it'll just give you all the links. And there's also my website, soulmagiccollective.com. It's a beautiful website too. And you sell stunning crystals. They're all <laughs> unique. They're I've beautiful. got them everywhere as we well, uh, show us some. <laughs> so this is the uh this I is need the some crystal therapy. Oh da -da 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 -da. that is majestic. <laughs> that is a bloodstone dragon. That's amazing. And the one that you held so up last beautiful. night, it looked a bit like bloodstone. Oh, but this it's one that I haven't heard of. So it's called blossom. It's a rare thing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, I have it blossom jasper so it has got little red flecks in it as well okay but it's, it's a bit darker than a i guess a yeah oh i like that too so, so when a crystal is cut into the shape of a dragon or any other um animal or uh, mystical thing does that yeah. oh is um does that enhance the it's, um it's energy of it i feel like especially skulls and dragons uh really take on a consciousness you know? Wow, I didn't realize you can, you can program your crystals too with language. I, yeah, yeah, I feel like intention. I, I was never very much crystal person, I thought, man. And um, <laughs> <laughs> but then I, people started bringing them to my groups, and then I had a, a psychic reading one time, and some, someone said, You're going to be a you're going to be the keeper of the crystal skulls, and I was like, oh. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I sort of so I so it started off with a few people just bringing a few crystals and I put them up front when I was doing the group work uh, in back in Sydney, and then um, and over time I started to um, started to get my own and it just grew from there. But I feel like I I, I feel like I've had connection with them in the Marine Atlantis, and that really what I do is. Um, as well as the consciousness of the being, so this one's a, a pink agate skull. Um, I also, and I'll bring some light language through if you want from this one. Um, oh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bring it on! <laughs> but, um, but this, but like, but I feel like they they get uh, charged up. Yeah, like the light language helps charge them up. And if I bring in through energies, whether it's in my own healing space at home or whether it's in a group scenario, they take they sort of feel like they get amplified. And I feel like it's a way of me sending energy out through the grids was as I give as they get taken to other people. So they get so someone takes a crystal 
they take them to their home location or wherever that where they are at the time yeah. they work with it and that sort of helps them but also helps the grids and transforms the energy through the ley lines mm. so it's kind of a way of bring, spreading 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 the energy without having to run around myself as much. You know, You're you know. putting codes into them. Well, I can. I bought some mm -hmm. crystals recently from Michael, and when I picked them up, it was I literally felt the energy because I read it, they'd been light language activated. Mm -hmm. um, felt put them in my palm of my hand, and boom, Shankar! Mm -hmm. I was yeah. like, I was my whole arm tingled. Mm -hmm. I told Michael that. Mm -hmm. That Indeed. really was quite magnificent. Mm -hmm. So, 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 should we do a little, um, little light language a little demo? Do you want to we, do that? We'd love we, that. We, yes. That would be fantastic. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> the floor is yours. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is a pink agate, and I've really loved this um, crystal. I've only found it about a month ago, and and the funny thing is, I pick crystals, and I don't sometimes know why I pick them. I just think, oh, I just go through, as you say, intuition and what I feel guided to. They and pick you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> mm, I do, and they kind of um, just come to me, and then, and then a few weeks later, I'll be, I'll just get the vibe. Or oh, I need to do a pink dragon transmission for the solar eclipse a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and so then all those pink crystals come and sit in that that energy field on and support the activation, and so it keeps rolling like that. Um, and then I kind of pass them out to people, so it kind of just um. That's how it's evolved. So this pink, okay. this pink, uh, uh, it's it feel it's a skull, but it also feels like it has a dragon energy, um, Andromedan, we could say. Mm. And this is really for uh, the heart chakra, uh, the collective heart chakra, because there is so much uh, been lifted up through the uh, acceleration um, uh, that it is bringing a lot up in the physical, either emotionally or physical um, ailments, even. Um, so we just want to release pressure and tension uh, in the heart space. Uh, and that's the, uh, I guess, the um, the basis of the language that's going to come through. But um, in reality, all you need to do is listen to the sound and let it wash over you. And you may feel something, you may feel nothing. It, it doesn't matter. It's still working on you energetically. So, so taking a, a gentle breath, feeling grounded and centered. Kuki kuki kuki, shala parkanda da ki 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 ki, kanda randa da ki 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 ki, oshke 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 la baria, bodo to 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 to, bor to 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 to, bor to 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 to, bor to 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 ki ka. Wow. I feel like my heart's just been massaged. Mm. <laughs> I really beautiful. do. That was magnificent. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you very much. It always does something. And it's interesting how you often blow out at the end too. I find yes. I do that a lot too. It's like shifting the energy. You really yeah. shift the energy with it. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, it, yeah kind of clearing everything out. Um, and the, the, the uh, I just got to say after that as well that, the language that I spoke there was very that that's a bit dragon like. Um, but just to say that pe if people are opening up to their own light language, that um, well, how you start is it, it evolves. Um, I didn't always speak as sort of fast and as uh, different tonicities as I do now. Um, it, it, there is a, a I feel like there's a gradu a graduation of your vocal chords as you practice it with people. Um, and as we said before, um, as the energy shifts that are coming into the planet, um, also the frequencies sometimes shift and the sound sometimes shift too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think we were saying before off air that um, mm -hmm. as people start bringing in their light language, it creates a, 
you know, a collective harmonic, which I just love that. Um, and yeah. some people, you know, some people are really, I mean, I'm a bit of a showboat, so I like working and <laughs> I like the, I like working with people and I like work, working with groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people are very private with their light language. They'll sing to the ocean. They'll sing to a tree. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll, that is, that is perfect. And that is or they are just themselves. And that is perfect and divine too. So, you know, it's really trusting mm -hmm. exactly uh, where you're at with it. Mm -hmm. you know? I love, I love the trees too. I definitely have a connection to trees, big ancient trees. Mm -hmm. They just call to me and I go and speak to them. They're incredible. Well, they speak to me. Yeah. And I'm more of yeah. the, well, I love the trees too. I love yeah. the oceans, love the water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I love, I'm, I like, yeah. Really I'm connected with some beautiful trees in Burren Up um, in WA near Margaret River. There's oh. a that's a beautiful part of the world, isn't it? Ancient trees there, um, so magical. A Palladian portal, actually. I is feel. It? Yeah. Oh, wow. Like the, the Margaret River area in WA, I feel like quite a strong Palladian um, access point where uh, when we, we go there for Christmas just to have a bit of a rest before the next year. <laughs> and, um, you know, I always connect us with the Palladian frequencies there, it feels very um, magical and yeah, yeah, yeah. lots of Palladian uh, 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 energies, uh, portals. Feels very feel, oh, the coastline there is just so yeah wildly beautiful. Like I, I've been there, been there too. It's just it mm. blew my mind. I wonder like if I it's a bit think. Lemurian too, because the waters are so beautiful, aren't they? The aqua yeah, blue, white, and... white sand, and really blue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. magic. Magical, magical. Western place. Australia is a mag magical place. Mm. It really is. Can yeah. we come for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> it's my three weeks off. I'm sorry. Yeah, you get the three <laughs> weeks off. Yeah, do you work but, really hard, Michael? Yeah. <laughs> sorry. But um, otherwise, yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, it's a it's a beautiful place to rest, recharge. If anyone feels like to explore that that energy there, I it's second that. Mm. And, and, what have, yeah, yeah, yeah. and what have you got coming up that you'd like everyone to know about? Any um oh so I have got a events? a two hour uh, transmission uh, in in Sydney coming up for the eleven eleven portal that'll be on Saturday afternoon. Um, so if you're in Australia or elsewhere, you can join online. Um, mm -hmm. If you're in Sydney, um, the tickets have sold for now, but you can always check in if anyone's cancelled. Um, it's two fifteen. 15 Saturday the, the afternoon and those groups are always really powerful I mean the the sessions in online when I'm on my own at home are strong but I think when it's the group and the energy of the group it also amplifies the work so if you want to experience some of my work you could join that group yeah so you're flying down to Sydney for that yeah yeah, yeah. well you're not walking yeah. <laughs> no. I could drive but I, riding yeah. your bike <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling a bit of a gathering starting to happen soon because we've um, we've potentially got Mark Atwood coming out here next year yeah. and AJ Roberts is interested too. Some um, lovely but, people over yeah, in England that we speak to on on Telegram. Oh, I do. I've, I've seen you've interviewed them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's also, a, you know, I, I before all the um, pandemic shenanigans, um, I was coming and doing... Um, activations in melbourne but i just haven't been traveling as much uh, interstate but um i'll let you know yeah it just came to me then you know we're starting to get a bit of a tribe happening in australia as well that could possibly all come together for something which should be yeah really most fun. definitely that i feel like that's i feel like that's where we're at as well uh, it seems like especially during the last few years we've been in our own little bubbles because this and that and it feels like something is shifting um, where we're where we're really needing to come together now. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yes. We're all helping each other so much more. We're all connecting so much more, even across the globe. You know, or whatever we're on the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we really are, and and our gifts are all becoming stronger, um, complementing each other. That's true. Helping yes. each other. It's been yeah, a really amazing time lately. I really feel that's what's been strengthening and happening for all of us. And it's exciting. We're starting to make a big difference. I feel like we're really starting to power up yeah. and yeah, do yeah. incredible things for the planet. 
I feel yeah. like the big changes in the energies of the planet are going to start becoming very apparent. That's yeah. that's what's coming. Oh, to wonderful. oh wonderful. Yeah. And it feels like, I mean, I, I like, I love that because also in the tribe coming together, it sort of allows for people to have um, downtime, you know, because I feel like with our individual light matrix, I, uh, you know, some of us are triggered by the cer cer certain energies more than others at different times. And I think if we're in a tribe situation, some it's sort of, there's always someone on board mm -hmm. where it, and if someone, like I was out for, you know, a good month and a bit with a sort of flu thing. And, um, uh, you know, that was fine. It's so, it sort of just feels like people, are, it gives people, it's all hands on deck all the time. So there's always space for other people to, to, to rest back if need be, you know, I think it's, yeah, that's nice. it just feels, and it does feel I, I, in the group work that I've been doing it really for the last three years, it's just over and over a uh, fortification of the chakra pillar, strengthening, 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 releasing past life trauma. Mm -hmm. And so it's getting to that point where we're getting so much stronger and more stable that I feel that, Yes, the work that we're doing is just um, really taking. Mm. Could fun. you tell us how the um, the twelve different um, galactic mm. races pertain to the or the I think yeah. the twelve star galactic council of light? I think the energetic collective. I'm not sure what notes I've written here, but I just mm. took it off your website. I found it very interesting how it correlates to the twelve chak chakras in the body. So um, I, I think, think I'll, I'll just bring through some channeling for this because I didn't sure. see what you know what they what said Thank um you. so we would say that we are the galactic elders we would not say we were 12 but we have knowledge and wisdom and information that is relevant and pertinent to this question thank you uh, uh we would say that there are 12 dimensional uh fields within uh, uh your um light body known as the 12 chakras which are parallel to the dimensions of a time space we would say that these have been not fully in alignment and that has been purposeful because your organic structure at a more dense level could not handle the level of charge and electricity uh, from the cosmos that can be uh, filtered through your being mm -hmm. as you have been amplifying fortifying and strengthening your vessel over time and the increase in the acceleration of the light coming into your planetary consciousness at this time you are now at a stage where a grand alignment is happening within this is a grand alignment of your 12 chakra pillar the 12 dimensional uh, energies that you can hold within your being and that is uh, also represented by the 12 galactic races that came together to from the 12 different dimensions to uh, uh, splice together and activate uh, uh, your uh, 12 strand DNA. So as the uh, alignment of your being occurs through the 12 chakras, through the 12 dimensions, then indeed you are activating within the cosmic pockets of your uh, cellular consciousness, the DNA is brought online, the so-called junk DNA is opened and then floods in the cellular memory, then floods in the conscious memory of who you are and why you're here and what you have done in many, many other realms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that was an answer and a half. <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you very much that was amazing that yeah. was a, I, I wanted to ask you as well michael about about dragons oh. and 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 there we go everybody and just imagine him flying across there um what 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 can you tell it like for people who don't know much about them including me georgie yeah. knows more but I, I wouldn't mind hearing and i'm sure the viewer viewers who are watching would like to hear about what they um, are what they do and why they're here I mean, I feel that with dragons, they're, they've they come in more strongly as a way to empower us, you know, mm -hmm. as a way, a source of empowerment. Um, you know, if you think about the archetype of the dragon, you're fire breathing, uh, majestic, courageous, strong, protective. Yeah. So they feel like the energies. So they, I feel like they give us um, that, that roar, you know, that inner roar that we are so needing to 
to have right now to to step up mm-hmm. in our sovereignty, speak our truth, you know, move into the leadership positions. Amen. So it's, yeah. I feel like it's all that, you know, it's all that sort of really empowering energy that is that and I think that's why they they really feel like they're connecting with so many of us right now is so that we step up um and because they know that energies need to shift and they need to shift quickly so uh there's a bit more uh, and I wouldn't say urgency but there's a bit more intention around things moving so bigger energies are needing to come in to help um uh yeah, dismantle yeah. what yeah, needs yeah, to be yes. yeah, 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 yeah. they're yeah. master Very alchemists cool. as well so they yeah. they transmute and shift and change energies and work with energy i feel that's one of the main things they do so they'll be working with the planetary energy and alchemizing what has been flipped mm. back, back to the way it should be uh, okay. and yeah. also many of us have been dragons in our lifetimes mm. And so they're helping us to remember that. And, and that is what you're talking about, empowering us again to really realise what an incredible being we are and that we have that dragon energy within us too. Yeah. And that's what I feel like for, for most channels, a lot of, I, I feel like a lot of the energies I channel, you know, uh, we've, we, uh, uh, an aspect of our soul has been that, you mm. know what I mean? Uh, you know, whether it's an ascended energy, whether it's, a a dragon whether it's an angelic i feel like we have some connection to that energy or we wouldn't be channeling it Mm -hmm. um that's my personal view and um so yeah spot on with i think we have been i really do (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. yep definitely wow well we've covered a lot in this in this chat and uh we'd love to speak to you again michael Mm -hmm. um in the you know in the future uh near future uh, and catch one also any of your uh, group workshops absolutely would love to do that so if mm. we can um, book in too soon um yeah is there anything you'd like to add Georgie no I've loved speaking with you yeah. would love to meet you in person soon one day hopefully and oh. thank you so much for your time today we've really enjoyed it and we highly recommend Michael's work to anyone who would like to do some light language activations or learn light language or just uh, any of the services that he offers, have a look on his website through his link tree, which is below this video. And um, hopefully we'll have another fabulous chat with him soon. But, yeah. But thank you so much, Michael. We've loved it. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> God bless you. Speak soon. Bye, everyone. See ya. Mm-hmm.